The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Monday, the 8th of July. We're looking at the Dow up 194 at 39,566. It went to a leg deep underneath the previous peak D of 40,077 on the 20th of May. That's where we shorted the uh, the Dow right at the, at the exact day of the high. We're not in that anymore. We wanted to add this morning to the uh, UDOW, our three times long position. Wanted to add to that, but I missed it by a couple of cents. Uh, if I'd sent my newsletter out just even 10 minutes or 15 minutes earlier, we would have got it. But I like to be quite exact in this particular instance, uh, so we missed it. But it meant that if it worked, um, in terms of looking at the Dow moving sharply higher to a leg D in the daily chart, it helps this weekly chart. And I've been talking about this for some time now. This is now going into the, since the low that was made back at 38, almost at round number 38,000 low at the uh, end of May. Uh, what we're looking at is one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth week of just small little candles moving to the upside, higher highs and higher lows, but the line is still very strong in the weekly, so you're going from a U-shaped pattern to a W. So let me just do this here. I think I can show it to you. Yeah, so I look at core patterns. First core pattern is a straight line up or down. That's number one. Number two is a cup formation or a V-shaped formation going from one point down and then back to that point. Now, I also have a technique that I call symmetry, with the number of bars on the left side equal the number of bars on the right side going to the exact point back again. It happens on the upside, it happens on the downside. I'm just mentioning that here because it happens with the arch formation as well. So one is straight line, two is cup, three is an arch, and then there's a mix of one and two or one and three. Look, here's one and two where it comes down sharply, makes an arch formation, takes out the left side low after a peak A or a B, that could be very negative. Well, it's the same thing on the upside. If you run very sharply, he has number one, green, and then you use number two, in this case, the cup formation. How quickly you take out that left side high is also quite important. Well, look at this. Yeah, you came down in a single leg A, it went to a trough A, and then up to a fractional new high. That turned out to be an E. Now, this is a pattern that I'm going to be talking about uh, more and more because, you know, I'm always developing these techniques. One of the reasons why I just love I, I love technical analysis so much is that it just keeps my mind active, it keeps me focused and, and learning all the time, every single day. I might not either remember or use it uh, practically afterwards, but I'm always learning. So what I'm learning here over the last, it's happened many times before, but in the, I like to look at markets as phases. And in this phase, what I've seen so often, I've seen it in the futures, I've seen it in, in the stocks, where there's a sharp move down and very quickly it starts to move to the upside. And what I've found is that sometimes this single leg A, in this case, I called it an E because the technicals were really deteriorating. But as long as the nine period moving average was uh, um, in place, the next move down, if it didn't take out that low that was made back at, uh, no, this is not the 38,000, this is 37,000, I think, 37,500. If it didn't take that out, then what I'm looking at is inside here, there could be a peak A and a B and a C. That's, that becomes an A instead of an E because it hasn't taken out the low. And then inside we get the rectangle that says, like here, you get a big, a large rectangle which says you can have a rally that can take you in the same time frame to a peak A, B, higher highs, higher lows, C, and even a D. But in this case, I don't know if we're going to make it because the rule is <clears throat> that it should take you to a just on, just under, or just above the previous major high, that's 40,077 in the Dow on the 20th of May, 
And then you've got to be careful if there is a pullback and you take out halfway of the whole rectangle. In this case, I'd say it's around about, uh, I'm just guessing right now, 39,200. Uh, you can go all the way back to that low. That would be the round number 38,000. And if you close sharply above, in this case, 40,077, that's going to be very positive. So as I'm looking at this, the MACD's weak in the weekly, the stochastics weak in the weekly, the on-balance volume has gone a little bit overboard. Now it's okay. The nine-period moving average, my indicator of last resort, is still acting beautifully. And we've got a monthly chart of PD. All right, I want you to take a moment to say, that means in July... The 40,150 to 40,280 area, I'd say is at this point, I'm calling it resistance. And support on the short term is at 38,900. And then it just drops off to that if it takes it out. It takes out that key support level. Let's go to the S&P. SPX, all-time high, holding beautifully. It's up 10 right now at 5577. Um, in leg. Now, here again, I have to call this, I'm calling it an F for now, six highest peak. Um, that might change, but at this particular point, that's what I'm calling it. And it's called the leg E in the weekly chart, still very strong. Now, the way other charts have worked, that peak C there has actually become a top, and that these are now peak A and peak B in many charts. But it is right now, just on a purely technical basis, that's what I'm calling it. Let me go to the SPY, that is the trading vehicle. And there I've got the same thing, DE and E in the monthly chart, all very positive, QQQ. You've got a brand new, um, yeah, now here we go. In the, in the weekly chart of the QQQ, I'm calling this an F slash B. One of the reasons is that sharp pullback after that peak D, <clears throat> the line period moving average held way, way above the 14. The MACD, though, did drop very sharply. So did the stochastic, not very sharply in the stochastic, but sharp enough at about 50%. And the on-balance volumes of this either is a continuation pattern or a brand new leg B. Either way. It says the 9 and 14 period moving average in the daily and the weekly are still strong enough to say this is a very powerful move. And only a leg C in the, uh, a leg C in the monthly chart. And if you re recall, in the Chapman Wave methodology, a buy signal that goes to a buy mode should go to at least four higher peaks to peak D. So this means that the monthly chart should still have a pullback and then a leg D, and that's where you start to worry about how high can it go. All right, we haven't got there yet, so that's very positive. Let's go to the IWM, and at this particular point, the IWM is uh, trading quite nicely. Uh, did I hit the wrong thing I did? Let me go right here. There it is. IWM is the Russell 2000. Now, I need to see the Russell 2000 find some favor. It needs to find buyers. It needs to become, um, how can I put it? It's out, I wouldn't say it's out of favor. Look, the weekly chart is just going sideways, but it hasn't become the favor. So my suspicion is that when you start to see, and I think we're going to see it at some point fairly soon, a little bit of uh, hiatus in the semiconductors, a little bit of hiatus in the, uh, in the fantastic Omega 7s, or Max 7, whatever they call it, um, and we'll see what happens. I'll be back. That was up 190. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, uh, we're back. Uh, the Dow's up 188, S&P's up 10. I just wanted to show you something. I had a question about uh, the uh, the 914 that I use so often. Indicative last resort, I call it. <clears throat> Look, the five-minute chart... I went positive at about 2.30 this morning. Then it went all the way to a peak D, and then it kind of stalled a little bit, and it went pink at about 7 o'clock this morning. And then it turned green. It turned green right at 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and let's just go to the high of the of that bar, 5.623. This is the five-minute E-mini. Well, it's still green, and it's gone all the way from that 5.20, let's call it 5.22, Area and it's going to 5637. Right now it's at 5632. Uh, and it's at a peak E. And you're looking at the 10 minute chart, which has not gone pink at all. It stayed green ever since it crossed positive right there at about 3 30 this morning. So I, there are a whole th a bunch of things I talk about in my webinars. And I'm thinking maybe it's time to do another webinar. I'm not sure if I'll do the. Uh, Live, live webinar that I've done before. I love doing those, but uh, I don't know if the expectations are too great so that people don't listen to necessarily to what we want. They just want to go, do I buy, do I sell? I don't know if I want to do that. I like to teach. I like to give you the tools so that you can fish and you can be a, your own fisherman or fisher lady. Um, I just, I, I find that a little just say, buy, sell, buy. I don't know. Anyway, right now, this is the most vulnerable that the E-mini has been. Uh, just from that level, and it's the green could very easily turn to pink. And look, here we get a very sharp pullback. So this is a technique that I like to use. There's one of, not many, but one of dozens and dozens of techniques that I've developed. So the other technique is the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone from 209.77 on the 14th of May. The iShares Russell 2000 ETF has dropped to 197.41. And it's really worked very hard to get back to even touch the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. That's this area right here. So to do anything very positive, this IWM, the IWM daily chart has to invoke some kind of strength that takes it to a leg D, just as the Dow did today. Now it could give up at peak D. It's already done it, so D's there. Above the 28th of June high, of 204.64, it needs to get to the 
It needs to get at least a penny above that to start D. That's not good enough. It needs to clear. It's like a hurdle. Anybody done the hurdles? I've done the hurdles. Um, you you need to clear that bar. And what's fascinating, I'm watching hurdles these days. Nobody seems to um, – I, I was taught, I, I was coached to let the body, your, your – Depends what uh, left footed, right footed. I'm right footed, so you take your left hand and you shoot it out as far as you can. Your body is almost parallel to the ground, and your right foot goes up and it's 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 and it's above. It's not parallel. It's it's raised above the hurdles, and your left foot you hit you almost like you got no hip. You try to put it, and you got absolute beautiful. Um, Air, air, you know, the the air supply is just such that you get no friction. It's beautifully controlled, and you, I see, I see guys running and women as well. Women are a little bit more closer to what I was uh, coached at. The guys is almost like standing up straight as if they're just running. Oh, it just happens to be hurdles, but guys, that's because they're so tall, I guess. But it's amazing. Anyway, so this thing treated this like a hurdle. Treat of it, treat of it like the, the, the Olympic runners now. They're almost vertical and they just raise their foot and they keep going. So that you want to see a nice push way above the hurdle itself. In this case, this green line of 200, let's call it 205. You want to see 205.10 on that big break above the downtrend line. And finally, you'll be, for the first time, uh, since uh, that will be almost two months, well, yeah, almost two months uh, ago that you were at 209.77. And that's what's needed. Comes back to the 20160 area or below the nine-period moving average, which today for the first time um, in quite a while has gone green. But the day's young. It's a, it's a daily candle. I wish I could say, oh, yeah, it's going to go green. No, there's no guarantee. Then I want at least two to three sessions I don't care if it's consecutive or whatever. It, I need two to three sessions where the green nine period moving average has expanded enough over the pink, uh, over the black 14 period moving average so that you've got a real good aperture and then that price can continue. So it's a work in progress. Let's just put it that way. Um, uh, oh, oh, who said that? Oh, Dan and the Dan. Uh, Basil, funny, interesting. I watched the U.S. Olympic trials with a former hurdler, and she kept screaming at the screen, "Your form is all wrong." You know, Dan, it's the pr it's you know like the, in the market, it's the price that counts, and here it's the time that counts. For instance, I was taught that and when I think back to my coach, Mr. Kotzea, K-O-T-Z-E. He, he was the uh, he was the manual training guy. He was the woodwork guy, but he also did coaching uh, for the uh, athletes. The, the athlete in those days, well, for me, athlete was the, uh, uh, the sprinting athletics. Um, and he used to talk all the time about running. If you're doing the 100 yards or the 100 meters, you go, you add another 10. You go flat out at least for another few yards past the line because you don't want to let up right at the line you go right through it in fact you excited to i was taught to accelerate through um things change it's the price that counts and it's the time that counts whatever they do that works that's all i can say all right enough with me let's get on we were looking at um so we did all those you look at the xlk the xlk had a lovely big spike to the upside Put a doji candle on Friday, all-time high. Another candle today, another kind of doji candle, 235.15. In the weekly chart, I have to call this a C. This is a leg C, and that says no major sell-off can occur that takes you under 190, and you're at 234. That's good to know in this phase. Once you get to D, sure, you can go under. But this is really positive in leg D. In the weekly chart, look at the SMHs. SMHs have just begun to stall a little bit. <clears throat> Haven't gone above the previous peak D, all-time high of 279.57, but very nice action. I've taken off all the shorts. We don't even thinking right at this moment of shorting, but I have to tell you, in the next few days, I would not be surprised to see a Microsoft, it's still long Microsoft, a Microsoft pulling back a little bit. These are extended prices 
just needs a breather. I'm not saying this is a major sell-off in here. I'm just saying you've got the Chapman Wave um, stalk leg formation in the weekly chart. I don't want to go through that right now. This is where you've got a long leg, then you've got an oval body, and then you've got the neck. When that starts to come down, it should usually you'd see it test the arch high of the uh, weekly chart in this case, and that would be at the uh, 433.60 or 431 level. And that's what I'm anticipating. Not a big deal. Uh, well, I suppose it is a big deal. It's 30 points. It's about uh, 8 or 9% decline. Well, I don't know if it's going to happen yet, but I do think it's a big other break. Um, Lily in the den, in the YouTube, tell you YouTube, yes, Lily is unbelievable. Eli Lily, large farmer, all time high, weekly chart leg E, weekly, a uh, monthly chart leg E. Uh, and is this a brand new A, B? Is this only a B or an E in the week? Fantastic chart. I'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
Hi folks, uh, X, X Bang. I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, but I'm going to do that anyway. Uh, that is, oops, what did I do? XPV, X, XPEV. This is a Chinese company. It is uh, XPENG, Inc. Spang. Uh, designs, develops, manufactures smart EVs. Sharp sell off today down 44 cents and $7.48. Yeah, peak D in the travel way. Remember the fourth highest peak? That's where other things can happen. Boy, did other things happen from the 850s down to the 748 level. Mm, that's a big percentage move. Yeah, the weekly chart just says nothing to see here. I, I, I had a question about Tesla. Um, how high do I think Tesla can go? Well, that's not – I go I go and say I have no idea. How high can it go? It can go to 1,000. go to 6,000. That's not the issue. Right now it's trading at 250. It's a spectacular move that's gone to leg D in the daily chart. It's only a leg C in the weekly chart, and my suspicion is that somehow or other – in July, there'll be just a test, and I don't know how long it'll last, a test of the high of the week of the 29th of December, which had a high of 265.63. So um, as that stands, there's another thing that I would look at here because over the weekend, so I, I, I saw a number of electric vehicles closer up than I usually see. For instance, I looked at a, was it a Lucid? Uh, Lucid, Lucid. L-U-C-D. Yeah, a Lucid. And I thought to myself, wow, I mean, that's a pretty expensive car. I believe they have the longest battery life. But when you look at the chart, it just says, is this company going to survive? It's at 80 cents right now. I mean, that is what a commitment. I don't know if I would buy a Lucid. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. If you buy a Lucid and it goes out of business, the only thing you've got there is a dinosaur, which you could put in a museum, and maybe one day it'll be worth five times what you paid for it. But that's different as a company. But when you look at Tesla, and that's the more, more, the more I, I went through this over the weekend, the more I said to myself, and I discussed this last week, I said, there's really a good chance that Tesla is the survivor. Tesla is the, it's like the, the old, the, the old person or old business on the block that's kind of been around, it's done, it's made mistakes, it's a survivor. I'd look at it that way. That's number one. But more important is the number two aspect, and that is Elon Musk has this way of creating businesses from nothing. Businesses from what you would anticipate is just like, I mean, how did he do it? And they're not small businesses. To I mean, to, to build spacecraft, first of all, to build automobiles, you need so much capital and you need so much space. And these warehouses, are everything is big. There's nothing that's small. What's small are those little microchips and then they cost a bundle, right? So... All I can say is that this looks to me like Tesla is the survivor in the whole group. And that's kind of a core. If you're looking at something that is, in the old days, what was your General Electric or what was your General Motors, Tesla's in that category right now. So with that said, I wanted to move on and look at, um, I wrote it down, let's see, for Monday. Oh, ARM. A-R-M is the uh, symbol so I had a question about ARM Holdings, uh, 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 semis, it does licensing, I believe, all-time high as we speak at 185.63. Oh, a question came up, and I, that's the reason why I wanted to bring up ARM. Remember ARM at 164 round number high uh, the week of the 14th of Feb, and then it plunged down to the 80s. I would say cut in half, that's, uh, that makes that round number really important. And then it had, at the bottom, it had 85.61 low, but it had a hundred round number um, that day. And that said, that was like a takeoff period. And what did it do? It took off peak ABCD, another peak ABCD. Then it went to an E, pulls back. And now it is, is this an F or is this a brand new B? I'm just for the moment saying it's an F. There's nothing to do. The technicals are still very strong. And within that context, um, it has at 184, it has 169 to 164 as um, 9 and 14 period moving average support levels. And it's really a leg C in the weekly chart. 
Um, and it's it, it's just looking very good. And what I had said earlier on, why I did not ignore it, although I was really foolish in not saying when I saw that round number at the bottom, walking the nine period moving average, I should have said, grab it. Grab it because it's only a peak A in the monthly chart. And here it is in that leg B. Arm holdings should still go in 2024 to maybe 2025, should still go to a leg D at least in a buy mode, and that's what it's in right now. Now, look at the monthly chart. The monthly chart hasn't even started putting in the slow stochastic. I need, I guess, I need a couple of more months, but there's no stochastic. There is on balance volume. There is a MACD. Now, I wonder what that is all about. Anyway, so it looks really good. So arm holdings, <clears throat> I think, from the Cup formation, little jagged cup formation, going to a new high and having the second day above the 177.31 high of mid-June um, is telling me that there's a really good chance that the 190 area, it's 183 right now, hit 185.63. 189 to 191 is kind of the area where I, I, on a visual measured move, I'd say that's kind of where we might go in July and that would be a lot of resistance. Next thing I wanted to do was... Um, so a gold, gold pulled back a little bit. It's down 12 at 2384. It's looking really nice. The stochastic's good. The MACD is good. The rent of strength is improving. Uh, on balance volume is good. And that's the daily and the weekly chart. Uh, and the nine is over the 14, and that's good. All the other technicals are kind of weak. Now look at this GDX. The GDX pulled back quite sharply overnight. It's come back a little bit from the 35. 81 low that was made during trading hours this morning is only down 18 cents at 36.09. So a question came up about um, the GDX. Why, why didn't we didn't why didn't we get back into the GDX? Because I chose something else. I chose CDE. CDE is um, core mining. It used to be called codeline, but it is in the silver area. I, I believe it does. It has metals, other metals, but it has the pattern that we're looking at, which is the Chapman wave. Stork leg formation, long leg, he has the oval body, and it's got the neck. And the neck now is in leg C. That's your restart right there. So this is a leg C. So it should pull back and then make a D. And then, and if you're looking at the weekly chart of CDE trading, what is it trading up three cents at 634 right now? Um, there's this bad power. Oh, it doesn't want to fit, does it? Or else. Open it up. Well, nothing works. All right. Well, there it is. Left side, right side, price, time match. I'll think about it when you get that. 1,758. S&P is up one and a half. Giving back some. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role.
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So I had a question about AYI. Now, I didn't remember that AYI was Acuity Brands Inc. I, I had followed this years ago. It had a spectacular move. And here it's done really well. It went from the 200 period moving average uh, around about 163 back with a whole, I mean, just sat there for ages and ages and ages throughout uh, June, part of June, whole of July, uh, August, it popped up and came back again. Even in October, it went right back down to that level after having a nice bounce to the 185 level. And then it ran all the way to the most recent high of 780, 700, let me just give you the exact, 278, was it? 272. And there was a Chapman wave. Yep, there it is. So that was a two-bar reversal, 272.74 and 272.61. Right there, that peak G. That makes it the high of 272.74 back in April, the week of the 5th. And now it's come down, and the 9 period moving average last week went pink. So the question is, uh, Basel AYI, we would like to start a long-term 75% position ASAP. And if it pulled back to the recent gap, invest the remaining 25%. Thoughts on AY, AYI? Thank you, baseball. Yeah. So I, this is a really tough one because it's already hit the 200 period moving average in the daily at about 229, went under that. And, and then it had a big spike and now it's consolidating. So this is what I would recommend. You have done your homework. You like Acuity Brands, and I just needed to do this. What's the time? Yeah, it's, I've got time for that. Give me one second here. I'm going to type in um, Acuity Brands does, and there it is. We are the North American market leader in smart lighting. I remember now. That's right, with the, with the home builders and all that. Smart lighting and building management systems that enable intelligent spaces and drive performance. We offer the most comprehensive portfolio port product portfolio across all indoor and outdoor applications, including location-aware technology. Oh, that must be like uh, um, uh, safety features. All right. So, okay. As it stands right now, it's making lower lows and lower highs in the weekly chart, definitely in the daily chart. So yes, you asked me my recommendation about the stock. I'm not going to talk about your intention right now. I, too, like it very much. I don't like the fact that if you're looking at Toll Brothers and Mini and HGX, look, it's almost the same chart pattern. It looks like there's no difference. Uh, if I look at the HGX, that... They all look the same, and they're going to lower lows and lower highs. So can I make a recommendation? The recommendation is AYI. Um, if you have conviction, then I can only believe that you're looking out three, six months, maybe even a year or two. That's very different. But if you ask me my advice... I would look for a retest of the 229 area, and it's already at 237. So that's, that's a long, long way to go down. 
But if you want start your position now, you want to go in and you said ASAP. I would not go 75. You ask me my opinion. I would not go 75%. I would start a position and it would be a smallish position. Now, this is the way I would hold the uh, position. You start your position. If you want to do it here at 238, I think you've got a little time. But this, if you're looking long term, 10 or 15 points makes no difference at all because it once hit that 272 level. So, and here you are at 238. So you've got uh, almost 40 points to go, to go even get back there. So what I would do is I'd start the position. And I know that you don't really want to go incrementally a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit there. Start your position as if it is just, as I've said it very clearly, it is a starter position. Let's just say you were going to buy X. Right now, you're buying a tenth of that. You're just starting your position. Now, my biggest thing here is to say, what what could it do? So you know how on Friday I, I showed you uh, a, a chart? Uh, well, I actually, I showed it to my subscribers. I don't know if I got time. I got time. What the heck? Yeah, look. I showed them the chart of this 10-minute chart of the E-mini and how I've done this. I've done this many times now. I'm starting to like it very much as a technique. And that technique is to take a long-legged candle where afterwards it's, it's kind of all, the market's all flustered. It doesn't know what to do. And then it eventually breaks out to the upside or the downside. And I do a measured move. And that measured move in this particular instance of the E-mini 10-minute said that from the low of that candle to the high, I could do one bar and I could extrapolate from that and do a one-to-one -one extension to the upside. And then I did that and I didn't at the time, I did it I did it by visually, but I didn't do it until just before I did my one-hour webinar for my subscribers, one-hour video that is on Saturday over my, for my weekend overview of what we're looking at in the market. And I showed you, look, it went right to within a, a couple of points, a quarter point, in fact, of the, that high that I was indicating. So now I'm using this technique and I'm saying to you, look at the pattern. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Look at this pattern. You've got this long-legged candle. And this is just a little minor candle. But now you're starting to test the bottom part of it. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to say to you, there are a number of things that are intimating to me that there's a chance that AC, AYI, Acuity Brands, could test the lower part of this range. So here we go. This is green. This is going to be pink. And that gives you at least a clue to say, if we start to break the downside, then this is what I have to look for. And, the, and what we're looking for here is, from the bottom of that candle, that this is the area between 229 and 225. That's the area that I'd be looking at to be building a position. But the position is contingent upon that 225 level holding. That's that's already far away from 229, the 200 degree moving average. And my thinking here is that this big ugly candle right here, this is the candle of the week of the 12th of January with a high of 210, oops, a high of 230 and a low of 204. That's the body. That's the candle that I'm looking for. At some point, if it can hold there and then start a really good move, and that move has to go back into the 250s, I think you're on your way to new highs. But until that happens, I'm just saying, Start your position. You could do it now. I personally would wait but right now, but it's just a starter position. And then let's talk about it as it gets closer and closer to this 200 period moving average. It hit it once and then popped right away as if to say, ah, electric, electric cable, I'm pushing away. But now it's come back because it's become a magnet line. And it becomes a magnet line if it, if it closes, I'd say if it breaks, but I'm going to say closes under 236.98, the low of Friday. I hope that helps you. And the reason why I'm making a big deal about it is it's in the area that is housing. And I, I'm looking at this area, and I think it's there, there's still some weakness there. I really hope I, I can help you just in the sense. Now, I could be completely wrong. Give me a yell, and let's look at it again. If by any time this week, if it is 240, 244.50, say something. A little different. Not that much different, but a little different. 
but at this point, I think it's it's weak. It's down 54 cents by 238.71. It's not a big deal, but it's under the pink nine period moving ahead. AYI, Acuity Brands. I'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So a uh, question came in about Raytheon. Raytheon trading at RTX is trading at 100.63, up 28 cents. So um, the daily chart, I never updated that. Um, it went to a peak... Uh, let me just do this real quickly here. So that's an A, B, C, C1, and C2. So that was a double top in the 108s and a pullback quite sharply. Uh, but I look at this. Remember, I, I always say that when I get to a leg G in the Chapman Wave methodology, that's the seventh highest peak, and it stalls, and I have a G slash C as a possibility. I can't tell you how many times it still goes to a D, and then you've got to be careful. What did it do? It went to a D right there in the weekly chart. So I'm just saying, um, and actually, I hope, I hope uh, Raytheon does pull back quite sharply because that'll be good news on the Middle East front. But uh, at this particular point, it's just the nine period moving average is still strong in the weekly chart, but it is pulling back. So, yeah, just uh, I, I'd say 90, 97 is kind of the key area this week to hold. If it pulls back under that, that's a problem. Next question came in Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin, you remember I said that I, I'm, I'm looking at weakness in Bitcoin. I know that a lot of people looked askance at me saying, what? 
Bitcoin is up in the 75, the 73, 74,000 area. Well, you know what? It would hit 75,185 on the 14th of March. And here it is the 7th of July or 8th of July. And it's just been, it's in a trading rectangle formation. And now it's starting to make lower lows and lower highs. It's just digesting huge gains. I think that's going to continue for a little while longer. So with that said, I'm going to say on the day, if the Dow is up very nicely, it's 158 right now up. If the Dow is able to hold 120 after 245 or so, often, that could be a very nice uh, gain. But we have to see. The laggers, we want to see the KRE, which is the bank, the regional banks doing well, and they just kind of stuck. And you want to see the IWM, the Russell 2000, gone at favoritism. Ah, it's getting it right now. Good. It needs to tackle the pink line. It's doing that. And then the green line, Russell 2000. We'll see what happens. Have a stay 